So I, uh, I'm honestly a little rusty at that, but I do think that being a DM gives me a lot more uh, experience trying different roles, different characters, different possibilities. Um, and I like building the story, and I like seeing the characters build the story as well. Like, uh, like I said earlier, I've been using the same world for three years for my games, um, and the characters have built up the world as much as I have with their choices and actions within. And uh, it's always fun, I think, when they throw me for a loop or when I like do some shocking plot twist to them that they hadn't even thought about or I curse them. And then five weeks later, I'm like, oh, by the way, you're turning into a fish slowly. <laughs> That's why you've been able to breathe underwater for four sessions. Nice. Um, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. Should have known. <laughs> yeah, you should have thought about that. Um, I would have just yeah. let it happen. Fuck it. Yeah, I'll just be a fish. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> got 30 I, backup characters. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I actually got to the point where it was happening to one of my characters. For literally like four sessions, I was doing that. Like, hey, you have gills. Hey, you have uh, webbed fingers and toes. Hey, it's hard to breathe. Hey, you got to drink a lot of water. Like, it's fine. I'm like, Okay. And then if you see, he's like, you're cursed. And he's like, oh, shit, really? <laughs> well, you fucking idiot. No, it's, uh, I don't know. Being, being a DM just. <laughs> yeah. I'm it it, lets, it opens you up for more choices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were actually turning into a sea hag, but like, okay. I, uh, it just shocked me that they didn't realize it. I was just like, I, do you just think I would give you all these, like, <laughs> Bonus <laughs> attributes just for no fucking reason. That's awesome. But... Nice. I'll go. I'll go. I got it. Uh, I mean, I actually kind of have a, have a, have a two prong answer to that. I mean, one, the the one side of it with my my kids game. I mean, I, I think I said this before too, where uh, you know, in the kids game, man. I mean, you talk about letting imaginations go that was i mean you just let them do their thing dude i i just i just plop them up uh, plop them up i plop a map in front of them i can plop them up whatever who cares yeah. I can plop anything in front of them and they're gonna make fun they're, they're gonna make some fun with it so uh you know the kids game it was more about a, a little bit more railroady in terms of like breadcrumbs and things and tw you know threading the story along for them so they can go but you know letting them be the heroes and and letting their seeing their eyes light up just on a little bit of their backstory kind of connected. I mean, that, that, that stuff was awesome. And then, yeah. uh, with the adult game that I run, first of all, I get to be a little bit darker with things that happen in terms of story and battles and gore and things, which I was like, I had to really handcuff myself. You know, they didn't, they didn't fight humans in the kids game. You know, they fought ogres and things with like in video games, they have like green blood or no blood or whatever the hell they had. But like this one, it's like decapitations and stuff. But besides that part, um, it was it was just a different dynamic because in my adult game, I just th literally just throw shit at them and let them figure it out. And I just I just kind of like the whole you know sit back, see what they come up with, and then I come in and say what happens. Like I I don't know I think that part's really fun and and just letting them be. I just I just pr provide them with a world and let them go do things. And the whole time there's this thing happen around them and all their stories are, are intermingling they don't even know what's happening but you know once they get there the, the oh shit moments for adult games are pretty enjoyable so i think mm -hmm. i think i got into it for the adult side of it just because letting more of my creativity just plop in front of my friends and then just let them have at it and i get to add in little things where like man i can't I don't know if like this person's going to come find me or this person, but I can't wait. I'm like, yeah, it might be one of them. And like, I already know who it is, but it's, I just love have like keeping, keeping them on their toes and keeping them guessing, man. That's uh, it's two different game styles with the kids and the adults. Yeah, but, for sure. <laughs> awesome. all, all, of it's, all of it's just amazing. Uh, well, I know. Um, yeah. So for me, it was mostly, uh, I started um, as a kid with my dad teaching me and starting to play as that. And it was kind of like a little bit of a, um, like a, a kind of like a demo intro of like, you know, this is how it works. This is how it is. And then I eventually 
found my own um, group to start with. And this is like before <laughs> the internet and all of its good uses. Uh, so it was basically finding um, friends that were willing to do it. But of course, the problem being is that uh, schedules were not the, uh, the best. And the one who I had a DM with initially wasn't very uh, reliable. And it, though it was, my, it was my longest one session, the longest session I've had like lasted basically three months. And that was it. Like every other one I had after that, it was just kind of like blips and blips and it would fall apart because the DMs weren't really either able to dedicate or just weren't as um, like into it in a sense. Uh, it'd be it for timing or maybe they didn't enjoy it. So for me, it became a um, an almost uh, forced um, role for me because I still love the game so much. And initially when you start out, I, I didn't feel confident enough to be a DM. I didn't think I would have the means to be able to really be an authority figure on like, yeah, I know how to work the game. Yeah, I know how to do no, no, I, I was like, I was very um, un, uh, not confident at all. This was like prior to me even really embracing who I was at the time. So I was very reserved. And I didn't really try to expose myself. But then eventually, um, as I got to like high school and later on in college, uh, I was more open to being a DM. And then I actually started to do stuff with people um, when I, have, I had classes and I had people that I talked to. And it might change every semester or so, but I would have these um, little cliques and groups that would just do things. And I volunteered to be the DM because I was like, it's not going to go anywhere unless I step in and dip the plate. And so once I did that, I started to take on more of the role and I got to enjoy it. And it was something I was like, you know, I can, I can enjoy DMing. I can enjoy building these worlds that I can create and have, like, you know, actually people immerse into it and see them get excited about something that I actually found. I was like, yeah, I just thought in the back of my head, and, wow, you love it? Okay, great, let's go. Um, and so it kind of became a thing of, you know, I figured I'll fill the role because someone else was doing it and it found to be a really nice place for me to be. And I've just been doing it since... Uh, and I've been, I've been a player more recently because of Rule 20, but even still, I've done DM more than I play. Yeah. But I love to play. I'm, I'm looking forward to the fact that this is like a game where I can be a player and I'm playing in a game where I feel it's so solid to the point that it's not going to be like actual yeah. complete campaign. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's why I think the game's so awesome is because it really brings out like the, your personality traits that that are good, you know, and that are highlighted. And then it also like really helps you build on the ones that are weak like you know confidence when you first started out dming you know like that built up over time by just taking on that role of being the dungeon master um and so like you know you learn a lot about yourself as a person just by play you know even being a player but especially being a dungeon master and it's true like you really have to give a shit about the game for it to like be fun for you and the people and like to continue going session after session it's a good question. It's a good, good, good spotlight. Good spotlight question. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't timing myself, so That's, I don't know if I, I hit my that was, time. That was, it was like exactly 10 minutes. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was looking. I have, I have a question. Yeah. I actually have two questions, but I'm going to ask one, and I'll come back to the other one. <laughs> um, but that was a good spotlight question. Um, Thank you. So, you know, we're here because... It's a toss up between two, and we're trying to figure out, you know, who's going to work. So, the long and short of it, I wrote down the question of why should we pick you over the other guy? Um, Pretty well, straightforward that, question, yeah, right? It's, straightforward, you know? <laughs> it's a straightforward question for sure. Um, you know, I think not knowing the other guy, uh, based on the information I have, I don't think I would be here if Sean didn't think that I was a good fit for the for the game and the players. Mm -hmm. So I guess if I if I had to say why, I think it would boil down to, um, uh, I'm I probably am going to I might be a good fit. There's a good chance that I be, might be a good fit for you guys and for the game and for Sean's show and for his game. Um, uh, I, you know, I'm I think that I would be a great player uh and um i'm i'm really excited to like get involved with this because you know i i think that it it just really lines up well with what i'm trying to do with my own personal channel and 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 being a content creator and stuff like that and just forming more of a presence and community online and trying to like i'm like taking it kind of seriously you know i'm trying to grow like a stream and a channel and a presence and um i'm gonna start creating more content like content on mechanics and a lot more stuff like the other popular youtube channels do um and so um i'm i'm invested in D. &D. okay cool i have another one but i will wait <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so I have one question for you, though. Um, 
if you saw yourself playing in this campaign right now and you had us um, as your fellow players, uh, what role do you see yourself mostly filling or what do you feel like you would be best as if you were to um, play as a party member? Um, I mean, like, as, as far as class-wise, I think I would like to play a wizard. I'd li I, I would really like to play a wizard or, like, a, an intelligence character, a mystery solver, um, uh, somebody who's putting the pieces together for everybody. Um, I think that would be the most the most fun class for me to play, um, and the most fun role to fill, essentially, um, uh, kind of an, an investigator or 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 the. Um, I'd probably create a backstory, you know, relating to you know what really it is that's causing these four horsemen to come in to the world, um, and and finding whatever magical power or secrets that I can discover to put an end to it. If you couldn't be a wizard, what would you want to be then? If I couldn't be a wizard, then I uh, I think I would like to explore being like a ver like a legit lawful good paladin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like really actually being like the good guy um, because in, especially in 5th edition you know they kind of toss the alignment system out the window and everybody operates within shades of grey for the most part uh, all the time I, I would really like to like be like I think it would be kind of fun to be like an actual force for good or at least somebody who thinks they're a force for good <laughs> what would be My your, question? your last oh, question Go ahead, go ahead. The, um, the last class you'd want to play. Uh, it might be interesting to... I think the class that most people are afraid to play is a bard because there are certain expectations a lot of people think that come with being a bard, like having to, you know, essentially, essentially be like the Scanlan short halt of the group. Um, uh, so I think it would be fun to challenge myself to play a bard and be somebody who is like collecting stories and s making songs about the group that he's a part of. So my, my question uh, kind of ties into AJ's there a little bit. He's, his was more D&D &D related, but I'm going to switch it up uh, a little bit. It's a very serious question. <laughs> in, in, in hindsight, it, 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 there is a meaning. All right, so if... You could be what ninja turtle do you see yourself as? And also, why aren't you the other three? Um I think that I would um <laughs> most definitely be Donatello. Uh, okay. Um, you know, he was kind of the sense of reason in the Ninja Turtles. Uh the um and you know I just I just I'm a big fan of the color purple as well. Um <laughs> okay. Uh, it's whatever answer yeah, you want to give. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, <laughs> like I don't think I could be Michelangelo because I just don't want to do all that extra cardio to work off the pizza that he's consuming. Okay. Um, and uh, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, Don, Donatello is just too, a little, or no, Raphael is just a little too edgy for me. Uh, like I, I don't listen to that much emo music, so like um, I probably just wouldn't have the same playlist that he has. <laughs> Okay. And then, um, uh, Michelangelo, you know, I guess he would be like that, that, that force for good, or at least the one that sort of thinks he's the force for good. But I think he's too one dimensional as then his solution is the problem to every problem problem is pull out my katanas and cut it up. And, uh, and, um, so I, I probably wouldn't be, um, Michelang Michelangelo for that reason. Cause I would, okay. I'd want him some more creative solution problems. First guy okay. that we face. Okay. I know it's a two-part question, but it, it has a meaning. It has a meaning to me, so I just I needed hey, to ask. I, I've, I mean, you know, I I've always loved the Ninja Turtles growing up. I never asked myself which one I would be and why. So hmm. I did meet I did meet April O'Neil at Universal Studios once when I was like eight years old. I think I still have the autograph she gave me with like a little lipstick kiss on it. You know. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, you don't get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. All right, you're good. That, that was my that was my question. Now, you've been saying that you're creating content and you're already streaming other D and D games and running a YouTube channel and all that. Um, 
let's say, for instance, that takes off and gets really popular, would you leave this game to do that since that's your own creation and this is someone else's? Um, no, absolutely not, because a big part of it, you know, it really is like building a community of fellow streamers, of fellow content creators, and doing it all on your own, like, that's fine, but I, you know, I think the personalities that I enjoy the most that are the, the, on Twitch and on YouTube are the ones that, like, play together and all have their own streams and shows as well. Cool. Um, I'm curious, um... What is drawing all of all four of you to my game and to me? Um, obviously, we're all here for a reason, you know. And there was a series of interviews, so if you didn't want to be a part of what I was doing, you would you would have dropped out. And um, I'm just curious what you guys see and what excites you, what you're looking forward to, and what. You guys have never played a game for me, and um, I haven't streamed a game, so you guys haven't seen it before, but um, you're all higher in um, intellect than a lot of the people didn't make it, so I think you guys can kind of imagine, um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm attracted to it because, you know, obviously going just, just through this process alone, you're that just shows that you're pretty dedicated to the endeavor so um even without knowing how you run a game or how you stream i think the most imp important part of being a dungeon master is being dedicated and as long as you can get past that part all the rest of it is is a little easier to fill in um so uh you know i don't have a lot of i don't have really have a relationship with a lot of other dms and you know since i operate within a lot of module content for the most part i'm also would be pretty jazzed about being in a world that somebody else made um having been running these worlds that somebody else made mm -hmm. um so those are those are like big, big draws i think from the beginning okay. i mean it's big but it's you know it's what with uh, I mean, this is something that's come up, you know, from everyone essentially in the interview, but like the amount of dedication and time that's been put into it already, it's not, it's something that I don't think a lot of people have ever really experienced. I mean, yeah, you can run through a module, you can run through a homebrew, and those can be fun, but like this is something even more than that. This is like, like you just, you've been saying, it's a production. It's not just a D and D game, and I think it's going to be very interesting because playing D and D by itself is fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we're all here. Mm -hmm. I feel like playing D and D, and then also getting an audience or a fan base of people who are just as excited about your characters and the, your story and your choices is just ramping that up to a whole nother tier. Um, yeah, I think it's honestly like a once in a lifetime opportunity as well. I mean, D and D is definitely becoming more popular. Mm -hmm. It's kind of coming out of the like shadows and becoming more mainstream. Mm -hmm. But even still, I mean, there are a lot of professional D and D streams on Twitch, but how many of them are just a module or just a kind of a shitty homebrew mm -hmm. from time to time? Like this is something completely <laughs> different. Yeah, uh, to me, I, I'd say I was just, when I first saw it, I was impressed. The, just looking at the webpage, seeing all the detail, the YouTube videos already uploaded, the voicing. I mean, it just, it, it wowed me from the very beginning. The fact that there was already so much and nothing nothing had started yet. And I was like, and they've already gotten, like, I feel I feel like if you're at stage zero, this is already at like stage three. <laughs> it's like, and it's, it's just way ahead of itself. And I was like, oh my God, this is phenomenal. And I'm not going to lie, the option of, creating something that can be built upon with people loving it and actually getting a lot of um, like uh, like a, a gain a gain from it like D&D actually becomes something that not only you can enjoy but it also is a rewarding experience for not only um, a, a good emotional and feeling but it also can be something that can promote you and you can actually like go off of it mm -hmm. I mean I know Sean says it's like I'm still going to do it because you love it and you do but god wouldn't it be nice if you could just literally do this <laughs> and nothing yeah. else <laughs> yeah, that's the dream. Um, but yeah, I mean, that to me, I really feel like after looking at it, that this has a, a great potential, a very strong shot of doing that. Like, it could easily take itself up, up and beyond. 
And especially since, I mean, because if you really want to go by the greats, they, they all have to be um, something created, something homebrewed, and, and an immersive world that people fall in love with. And I think that Sean's world is just one of those worlds. I, I think it's got everything it needs. And I mean, you've already got a team that's like ready and not only um, willing, but they're also doing it without being paid or supported. That says a lot. That, that says a, an immense amount. I can't, can't put words to that. And I believe in it just as much as they do. I mean, I I, I wrote down, because I don't want to forget my thoughts. Sometimes I, <laughs> if you haven't been able to tell by now, sometimes I have something really good, but then my brain goes 14 different directions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, think it's, I think it's exciting to be a part of something with, as AJ said, with potential to, to be... Not necessarily from the ground up, because you guys have already done, like you were saying, like you're already past the ground stuff. And to be able to contribute to the project, and it's not like, you know, there's there's been a whole process to this where, you know, we're all here for a reason, multiple reasons, because A, we want to be, and B, because we were chosen to be. So all of those factors adding up into, you know, this... This, this could be something really great. And I'm really excited to be a part of something that's great, you know? And uh, I think it was uh, Dylan who said about, you know, possibly having people, uh, not even possibly, like I'm not even, I'm past that part. It's like, just, just knowing that at some point we're going to have people that are like excited about our characters and, mm-hmm. and, and are, are all about our stories and seeing what happens next and tuning in next week and, you know what crazy hijinks are we getting into like that is amazing to think about mm-hmm. like i've never thought of that before when i first started playing D D, and now i'm here with you guys ready for that next step and uh yeah once a lifetime opportunity man um, i i i'm echoing my my fellow two compatriots over here um who, who've already spent, like we're we're all in that same wavelength of uh you know the commitment that sean you guys have all put in a that goes without saying. We, we've 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 said that numerous times, and uh, I'm excited to see. Uh, you know, you're gonna take the reins, and we're gonna pull the horses, and we're gonna we're gonna see where this thing goes, man. One of my favorite parts of the of Critical Role is just watching the at the end when they show all the character art. You know that people put yeah. in. It's like, man, that's yes. just fucking crazy to get to a point where people are just making art about your D and D character. Right. You know? I, I think that would be kind of crazy to, to experience that that kind of thing so yeah i appreciate everything you guys are saying it's really nice to get stuff reaffirmed um this has been something i've been working on for a while now and uh it really sucks because there's so much to front load which will make more sense once while we're playing west so much of it has to be done before the game can start because traditional games as long as you're ahead of the players you're good to go um but like I have future sight of what I know it's going to be, but it's, it's been a long road, and it, sometimes it's daunting, and you get a little burnt on stuff. It's like you want you want fruit for all your, you know, your sowing. <laughs> um, but my intentions for my players is, um, obviously, I want to be successful in this endeavor. I want my brand, my game, to become something. I want to become something, but... I'm not doing this alone. Um, I'm looking for people who have an understanding of they're one fifth of the of this show, and if we become successful, that success is hopefully going to be for you as well. So everybody who's in it, I want you to once the campaign's done, like finish the campaign please like once you're if, if <laughs> something happens where one of you become justin timber like don't just <laughs> jump out of it you know, finish, use it use it <laughs> finish the tour and then do your own solo like um i would love for all of you guys to be able to use this for a resume say to apply for critical role or for I- anything you know what i mean like take this and further your careers just don't leave prematurely please finish out um everything um but I don't think you guys would, you guys wouldn't be here if I didn't think you were going to stick it out. But I'm, I'm hoping that this is something that you guys can take with you as well. 
Yeah, I've, I've been dedicated to my games that I run for four years now. I stay pretty dedicated. I'm looking, definitely looking to be a dedicated player for once. Mm -hmm. Are you opposed to us making Hoda cups and hats that I can like <laughs> do this like while we're playing? Uh, <laughs> they're, they're, they're already in the works. Yeah, they're they're on the merch, merch page. Oh, on seriously? The yeah. yeah, yeah, they have a mug with the whole thing on it. Oh, amazing. Okay, well, I know what I'm doing after I'm done here. All right. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. If all I, put, I, put my, and shirts and I put my critical role hat on. That's the only one I got. But uh, I'm sure we'd rather wear our own merch. You know what I mean, man? Yeah. So, oh, and take it off. Everyone, Throw the hat. Everyone is chosen. I'm also going to be sending tokens to. So I need your cool. address. So you can give them out okay. to your friends and, you know, whatever. Try to get more viewers. There will also be giveaways during the stream and stuff. I got a thousand of them. Jesus. So, wow. <laughs> I got. I know five people, Sean. I'll just give them. Yeah. I, I feel like you <laughs> gotta keep those away size. from the kids, otherwise they're stacking them like Legos and making little boards with them. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So when you guys send me your address, awesome. also let me know how many you want. Ten, twenty, whatever. Um, though it will also be for sale on the site, but it's mostly just for giveaways and mm -hmm. you know, um, rewarding people who are constant to the game. All right. Um, ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Skitter to do to do. I don't know. <laughs> Keep going on with your your melody there, bro. <laughs> All right. So, kind of talk this a little bit, um, but not as an actual topic. So, what makes the best campaign? Now, you three have already answered these questions, but I'm gonna restructure towards. What would make my game the best campaign for you guys? Um, you guys have watched some lore videos. You guys kind of have an idea of what the world's going to be like. But just, I'm also needing to tailor how I'm running to best suit you guys. And you guys are going to need to tailor how you play to best suit my world. So it's going to be a relationship that we're not going to know until we start. And as we're going through, we're going to be, you know, evolving together. But what are some things that we're going to need to do to make this the best campaign it can be for you um, as far as you and the other three players and then myself? Uh, um, so I, I think what would make this the best, the best campaign for me um, and hopefully in turn for you is just the, you know, and, and a lot of the stuff that I watched recently, you know, they the creators of from Wizards and all that, they really hammer home like the collaboration uh, process um, that it's everyone at the table's game. So it can't just be the dungeon master's game, it can't just be the player's game. Like everyone has to be involved from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that you know that that's it's just like going back to you know having the players that don't can't really speak up and stuff like that like everyone pulling their weight so you know there's not that feeling of like this is just about me mm. Mm. I think it's important that we don't shy away from the sensitive topics um, we talked a little bit about it in the interview like racism sexism things like that and it's already in the game with the tabaxi and their caste system. Um, I think the problem that a lot of D&D &D games have, such as just for instance, like Acquisitions Incorporated is nothing they ever talk about is actually a serious issue that can mm. be relatable to yeah. anyone, really. If there's no um, humor in it, they won't go there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, critical Role, less so. They do deal with some important stuff, but I still feel like they shy away from like the real kind of dark brutality of some of the things like um when they went to the vampire uh place you got a whole city run by vampires like that that's black like that's dark and gritty and brutal there's suffering and all that kind of stuff and it was just kind of glossed over i'm not saying that we need this to be like a warhammer 40k